I've made quite a lot of videos about collecting Star Wars action figures and displaying Star Wars action figures, and especially my own personal interest in different sort of subgroups that I collect, such as wanting to complete the original 92 or 96 or 120, however you count them. Go to your own math nerds. All right. But yes, having sort of subsets is a big part of Star Wars collecting. I love collecting Rebel pilots, and even though they're not quite the same orange, at least it's not as dramatically different as the switched colors and odd detailed differences in attempting to collect Imperial officers. All right, the reason I want to make a video right now about Imperial officers is because we're getting a brand new one. We have um, Piet and Grand Moff Jezerod that are coming out in 2023 and kind of represent what the future of Imperial officer collecting will be. Now, for those of us who have been around since 95, when the modern Star Wars line started with Kenner slash Hasbro with Power of the Force 2, there's been a lot of Imperial officers that have been released over the years, but as you can see, the details between the rank emblem, the color, the scale, the way the articulation works, it's kind of all over the map. Now, the very first kind of Imperial officer we had was the Death Squad Commander back in uh, 78. This was really supposed to be the guy on the right, the Death Star Trooper, who is in all black. The reason that we got a figure that was wearing gray with the Trooper helmet is pretty much the same reason that we got a lot of goofy characters from the original release from Kenner, and that, well, their reference material wasn't exactly uh, the way it is in the toy industry today. The Cantina Aliens being especially a good example of off-model characters is what we would call these, but Back then, toys weren't really expected to be on model. It was all about the play value. So having a character that wasn't quite the right colors or right outfit, uniform that matched screen wasn't something kids really cared about. But it is interesting that this very first Imperial officer figure we had, well, it was anomaly. Basically, this was the reference image. It looked like from the lighting that he was wearing gray, but really the outfit is black. In fact, there's not a single gray Death Star Trooper in the entire original trilogy. Believe me, I've looked because I was curious if this could be a legitimate repaint or variant. Now, speaking of variants, the original figure did have quite a few, but none of them really put it in the correct black outfit that it should have had until the modern line. And, you know, again, I always thought it would be cool to have a repaint. Now, another interesting example of the black and gray swap was the second Imperial officer, the one we got for Empire, which was just called Imperial Commander, which showed a gray-suited Imperial officer, but sold us a black one. The gray-suited or white-suited Imperial officers would never get made in the vintage line, although it would have been, honestly, pretty cool, and especially because they were kind of cool army builders. Now, our first actual officer, and not like a Grand Moff, was when we got Piet in Power of the Force 2. We also got the generic black outfit version, and we got several versions released over several years on several different card backs and three different head swaps. Unfortunately, this particular tool was riddled with wrinkles. It took until we got this Battle for Endor pack that we got a version of the black Imperial officer outfit or uniform without an overabundance of ridiculous wrinkles in it. I don't know why this guy had an iron and the other guy didn't. All right, but we gotta talk about this guy, Grand Moff Tarkin, which was the first modern Kenner Hasbro Imperial officer and even called that out that he'd never before been offered in any Kenner collection. Well, because honestly, Grand Moff Tarkin really is the main villain of the first movie. I mean, sure, Vader gets all the attention, but I mean, Tarkin's the one who orders Alderaan to be destroyed. All right, so this figure came out in Power of the Force 2, and then we got several Tarkins since then, and let me say the green one was anomalous. Uh, the green one, I'm saying, the second from the left. Well, that was based on a Marvel comic books, so obviously he's not going to be in the gray outfit that Tarkin is seen in the film. But what's interesting is the quote-unquote best Tarkin, supposedly, the Vin also wearing green. I still don't quite get this because the green does not match any of the gray outfits that any of the other versions of Tarkin or even any of the other Imperial officers have. It kind of always drove me crazy. The only other time we've gotten a sort of green uniformed Tarkin was the 12-inch figure that Hasbro put out. I mean, heck, even comparing the vintage Tarkin to the Black Series Tarkin, you can see the difference in color in the outfit, gray versus green, and then some of the other differences that are important is also the rank symbol. All right, so we're going to get into that in a moment. So with Captain Piet, 
this was a uh, character that kind of kicked off just the generic Imperial officers, and then we got a real boost when we got the previews exclusive Death Star briefing room set, which gave us a whole bunch of officers, including uh, one in white from the security bureau. And then eventually we would also get unique sculpts released on individual cards, such as Captain Nita here, which is actually a really important Imperial officer to talk about because, one, this was the first time we had one with a removable cap. Not that I'm being in favor of that. I keep losing my Gamorrean guards hat. But he also had a Imperial rank badge that was not part of the tool. It was swappable, as well as, I said, the removable hat. And... From a collector standpoint, I said, oh, great, this is going to be like a perfect buck to use other figures. Unfortunately, it never became that. And instead, fast forward to today, and we have a brand new Imperial Officer buck that's being issued first with Admiral Piet. I think he might share some parts with an Andor figure. But yeah, if you look at him compared to Nita, you can see how Nita's rank insignia was not part of the tool. It could be placed there so you could customize it. The new tool, which is being used for characters like Piet and this is Moff Jezerod coming out later in 2023, it's the same body, which means that you're getting the same rank insignia. Although I do notice that Jezerod and Piet have different imperial uh, cylinders, the little little gray thing. So maybe there's two different chess pieces that they're swapping out, but the rank insignia is the same on both for a Moff and an Admiral. So that's kind of disappointing. We've had Moff Jezrod before. This is what I guess I would call uh, the Mr. Potato Head Angry Eyes version of him that came out in the Saga collection a few years ago. So I'm all for getting updates and, you know, getting a character with a removable helmet. It's one thing, or removable hat, but that removable Imperial insignia that Nita had would have been great because, again, you can see the different Imperial officers have different insignias. Some of them are two bars, some of them are one bar, some of them have five, some of them have four. So it's a little frustrating that a universal buck that's probably going to be used for all Imperial officers going forward is going to have them all with the same rank insignia. But, you know, hey, I guess it's just cool to get lots of officers and details such as, you know, whether there's six or eight or, you know, how many yellow squares there are versus blue. While I think that's a very important aspect to the details, I could understand the need to have sort of a buck system and you can see the two piets the power of the force 2 and the modern one looking at that rank insignia that yeah it's kind of not correct to the admiral position that piet should have even his captain version i mean heck if you look at the black series version they're able to swap out the insignia so you have different ranks and then same with the cylinder so maybe this is something they'll do for the three and three fourth as well i mean so many different versions of the same character and the color of the outfit, the rank, the belt, there just doesn't seem to be a consistency. They just kind of like keep doing them in different shades of gray and even that weird green one that has a cloth, the vintage versus a retro Tarkin there on the right. And I mean, you can really see the difference. So I'm glad that for the new Piet, they've gone back to the plastic tunic, if you will. You know, it's not made of soft goods because I just feel like that reads like a skirt. And while we're not getting quite a match as far as the uniform color, and I mean, you can see a direct comparison here between Piet and Tarkin, and actually, I think I put Moff Jezrod, that should have been uh, Veers there in the middle, but yeah, I mean, you can see the comparison in color. So we're now settled on kind of a grayish color with, I guess, the Moff insignia for all of our Imperials going forward. Of course, unless they have two different, you know, front chest tools, which I hope they do cool to swap them out. What do you think? Have you had trouble collecting Imperial Officers? Have you had the same kind of uh, frustration I have over the years about the inconsistency? What do you think of the new Piet? Is it going to work as a buck for you? Let me know in the comments below. Always love to talk Star Wars collecting and hear what you have to say. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sharing. And I'll see you guys in the next video.